Thumbelina, Chapter 8, Meeting Mrs. Gray Winter arrived. All the flowers had died, and the wind blew cold. Thumbelina wore a coat made of leaves until it fell apart. She could not keep herself warm, and she had no food. Where is everybody? Thumbelina asked out loud. Does everyone have a home but me? One morning, Thumbelina woke up in a dried up cornfield. Big snowflakes fell around her. I need to find shelter, she said, looking in every direction. Just then, Thumbelina saw a dark hole by a corn husk. That looks like a good place to sleep, she said. I'll just curl up inside for a while. Thumbelina walked over to the hole and peeked in. Why, there's a door here, she exclaimed. As she started to knock, the door opened. Goodness me! A mouse cried. You look half frozen. Come inside at once. Thankfully, Thumbelina took one step forward. <sighs> Wait, wipe your feet first, said the mouse. She pointed to a mat on the floor. When Thumbelina finally got inside, the house was warm and cozy. It was very clean, too. I'm Thumbelina, she said. You have a lovely home. I know. I'm Mrs. Gray. Now, wait here. I'll bring you something to eat. Thumbelina sat on a chair and fell asleep right away. When she woke up, Mrs. Gray fed her. Then Thumbelina fell asleep again. She was very weak. Poor little thing, said Mrs. Gray. I'll take good care of you. And she did. Soon Thumbelina was feeling stronger. How can I thank you? She asked Mrs. Gray one day. Mrs. Gray was polishing her furniture. She thought for a minute. Well, I'm old, she said finally. If you wish to stay, you must help me. From that day on, Mrs. Gray taught Thumbelina many things. Don't hold your needle like that, Mrs. Gray said as she showed Thumbelina how to sew. Don't let the turnips boil too long, Mrs. Gray said, as she taught Thumbelina how to cook. Thumbelina was a fast learner. Everything Mrs. Gray said, Thumbelina did. One day, Mrs. Gray watched Thumbelina sewing. She's doing it just the way I taught her, Mrs. Gray said to herself proudly. Then, for the first time, Thumbelina began to sing. La da 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 La da 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 What a lovely voice she has, Mrs. Gray thought. She suddenly had an idea. It was a great idea. Yes, Thumbelina would be perfect, she thought. She would be a perfect bride for Mr. Rufus. <laughs> <laughs>
Thumbelina, Chapter Nine, Mrs. Gray's Plans. One morning, Thumbelina was doing her chores. Sweep the floor slowly, Mrs. Gray corrected. Or you'll make too much dust. Then Mrs. Gray looked up at the clock on the wall. She smiled to herself in a strange way. Suddenly, there was a short knock at the back door. It's Mr. Rufus! Exclaimed Mrs. Gray as she opened the door. Mr. Rufus was a large brown mole. Like most moles, Mr. Rufus could not see very well, so he wore very thick glasses. He walked into the room holding a cane. Good day, Mrs. Gray," he said in a deep voice. "You were kind to invite me for tea." Mrs. Gray laughed in an unusually high voice. <laughs> "Oh, Mr. Rufus, we are delighted that you could come. This is Thumbelina." Mrs. Gray is acting strangely," thought Thumbelina. "I'll get the tea," said Mrs. Gray in a sweet voice. "Thumbelina will stay here and chat with you, Mr. Rufus." As she was leaving, Mrs. Gray whispered to Thumbelina, "Mr. Rufus is a fine gentleman." And he is very rich. Be kind to him. Thumbelina sat next to Mr. Rufus. He did not speak. I hope winter is almost over. Thumbelina said. Huh, winter is never long enough," said Mr. Rufus with a grunt. But it's so cold," said Thumbelina. Not where I live," said Mr. Rufus, and he grunted again. "Ah,、uh, I live in the deepest hole around here." But isn't that too far underground? You can't see. Thumbelina glanced at his thick glasses. I mean, you wouldn't feel the sunshine or hear the birds. Bah. Mr. Rufus waved his hand. Who needs sunshine? And birds are horrible. They're messy. They steal food. Thumbelina thought about Pete, Chris, and Maggie. I don't agree with you, sir.、Oh. She said. I have bird friends. They are very kind. They taught me many songs. Mr. Rufus turned his head toward Thumbelina. Sing one, he said. Oh, I couldn't. Thumbelina blushed. Bah! You mean you can't? The mole said. I'm not surprised. Nothing good comes from birds. That's not true, said Thumbelina. I'll sing you a song. Thumbelina began singing softly. Her voice rose sweetly. She was thinking of how much she missed Mrs. Marigold. Mr. Rufus started to smile. "It's working," Mrs. Gray said, watching from the kitchen. "Mrs. Gray was right," thought Mr. Rufus. Thumbelina has the loveliest voice. Yes, she will make a good wife for me. Thumbelina was not thinking of the mole or the mouse. Her song was taking her back home. So, she just kept singing. <laughs>
Thumbelina Chapter 10 Getting Ready for a Wedding Mr. Rufus spoke quietly with Mrs. Gray and then left. My plan is working perfectly, Mrs. Gray said, her nose wiggling happily. What plan? asked Thumbelina. Mr. Rufus has agreed to marry you, said Mrs. Gray. Thumbelina was shocked. But I don't want to marry him, she said. Don't be silly, frowned Mrs. Gray. Mr. Rufus is rich and kind. You are lucky he wants to marry you. But Mrs. Gray, began Thumbelina. Not another word, the mouse said sharply. There is so much to do. One morning, Mrs. Gray brought in a big basket of corn husks. Mr. Rufus wants you to weave some mats, said Mrs. Gray. He has furry feet, but you do not. And his floors are cold. Thumbelina stared at her bare feet. She had lost her shoes in the forest somewhere. The next day, Mrs. Gray brought in dried hay. You need to make some brooms, said Mrs. Gray. Mr. Rufus's home has many rooms. They all need sweeping. I don't care, Thumbelina almost shouted. He lives underground. I'll never see the sunshine again. Well then... You'll need some light, Mrs. Gray said, ignoring Thumbelina. She went to the closet. Here's a lantern, she said. It will be dark in your new home, but you will get used to it. Why can't I stay with you? Thumbelina asked. Mrs. Gray said sternly, Plans have been made. It's too late to change them now. But I won't be happy, Thumbelina said sadly. Suddenly, she heard a light tapping at the back door. Thumbelina opened the door. Wonder when weavers at your service, said three black spiders. They all wore gray shirts with a W on the front. Each W was a different color. Mr. Rufus hired us to make your wedding dress, said the spider with the gold W. How kind of Mr. Rufus! Mrs. Gray clapped her hands. The spiders measured and spun almost at the same time. We won't need much lace, said the spider with the red W. She has a tiny waist. She is a bit thin, agreed the spider with the green W. The wedding dress seemed to appear before Thumbelina. As she watched the spiders, tears came into her eyes. I need some fresh air. She said quickly. Thumbelina, Mrs. Gray said sternly. But Thumbelina ran outside. It was cold but sunny. I'm tired of everybody telling me what to do. She shouted into the air. I don't want to get married. I don't want to live underground. But... Nobody heard Thumbelina.